Welcome to Punch Keys Podcast. I'm Poppy Minix, your co-host, bringing you blunt talk for the fiction novelist. And I'm Cass Kay, your other writerly co-host. If you love to ramble about writing and need a tribe, you found us. Are you ready? We're uncorking now. Let's talk about punching those keys. Hey, Poppy. What's up? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm doing fabulous. Oh yay! That's probably because of the wine, yeah. Uh, yes. Well, that is definitely. And life is just a miracle of butterflies and sunshine and glitter. I know. (sighs) Is it? Is it though? I'm I'm just gonna say that. You know, we're just gonna go with with it. it. All right. Yeah. So tonight's really fun um, for us. I think listeners are probably going to cringe a bit, but I hope they hang tight. This is like tropes. We're like, we introduced this topic that everyone has all of these negative connotations Ooh. of. And we're yeah, like, wait, hold up, hold up. So tonight we're talking about dun, 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 genre expectations. Oh, that's a big one. Do not hit stop. You are still listening. Don't keep going. Be- it's important. Hey, we got you. We can do this. <laughs> okay so i was thinking about this there's so much push and pull about genre expectations there's people are like i'm all about genre expectations because i'm just here to make money and i am just pumping out whatever i need to to make money and there's people who are like i'm in it for the love of the story and i'm gonna tell the story however i want and no one can tell me how i'm supposed to tell my story yep and i think what i would really like to talk about through this episode is the middle people, right? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Oh, and yeah. the way, the reason we have genre expectations. Well, I also kind of wanted to talk too about how genre expectations, I think a better term for it is actually reader expectations. That's exactly it right there. Okay. Let's just start there. Why do reader expectations even matter? It depends. Do you want people to read your book and be happy with it? Or do you want them to throw it against the wall and ban you from anything they ever read further? So, Or do like also a factor is regardless if you're doing this just for the love of telling a story or just for making money, whatever it is, if you want people to read your story, people always look at reviews before they buy a book nowadays. Gosh, do they ever. There's no one who doesn't. I mean, I, I'll take that back. There's always someone who doesn't. But I mean, most people like hop onto Goodreads and are like, how many people have reviewed this? What's the average rating? Let me look at a couple of the worst ratings and a couple of the best ratings. Let me see Mm -hmm. why it was rated poorly by the worst. Yep. Why it was rated awesome for the best. Yeah. Because I am a reader who has certain expectations and I have certain things that I want. If I'm reading a creature horror thriller i'm going in there expecting some crazy creature i'm expecting some death i'm expecting some mystery some lore to be exposed i'm expecting some horror tropes to be in there i have expectations and this goes back to these tropes that we talk about too right so every yeah. genre has tropes, which is a reader expectations. So if I go into this and the person's like, yeah, I have a creature. Yeah, it's horror because he feeds off of the pinky toes of infant babies. <laughs> but, yep. but he replaces them with magical toes. And it's actually this beautiful, lyrical, it's all done in, you know, I don't know, some lyrical poetry Limerick. Format, yes, format. And it's all, it's better that they have these magical toes than their original toes. And it's like so in depth and analytical. And it's this literary prose on why magic makes you like, I think that could be a beautiful story, maybe. Um, but why are you pitching it to readers who aren't going to be interested? A, that is literally exactly. So, yeah, it's the not thing. that you can't tell that story. You can tell Gosh, whatever can tell story you want to tell. There yeah. is a place and there is a readership for every story. If you don't understand how to find those readers, though, and genres and reader expectations are your cheat codes 
for finding so, people that are looking for your flavor of story. Exactly. And I think that's the thing is that I just remember starting, I remember starting writing and I was like, I'm writing this thing and it has some humor and it has paranormal and it has some romance and it has this and it has this and it has this. And I didn't really know like which way to turn. Motherfucker, I hit my elbow on the table. I'm sorry. That was my funny bone. <laughs> Your face. Oh. I'm like, oh, right. The funny bone is not funny. I'm it's just good. not. No, it's not funny. I'm good. Keep going. You were writing a book with so many things. <laughs> okay. So I'm writing a book with so many things. And is your arm work? Yeah. You're good now? Yeah. I'm good. Okay, good. And you know, it's like as a starting writing, you have like a hutzpah to you. You have you have this, <laughs> this I love that. You have this confidence <laughs> and you're like, I wrote a book. I wrote a book and it is Do a good book. Do not book. change my book. Do not change my book because I wrote it and it's beautiful and it's fantastic. And, and that is, is totally art. and utterly true. All right. You get it. You do your art. You got it. Um, but what is your book? I mean, what is it? And it's it's really interesting because I've been through this process multiple times now. I've been through <gasps> with Can we editor. say you just signed your yeah. fourth book contract? I did. I just, I literally tonight, I just signed my fourth book contract, which oh, is super freaking exciting. She says she's been through this, guys. There's I've been through this a few times. Just a few behind times, it. Right? <laughs> so I've been through this a few times and it's like, I had what I thought, what I thought I had, you know, and then I went through it with the editor and they're like, okay, well, yes, you totally have this seven genre thing, but maybe it <laughs> should just be one, you know, just thought. And, um, and, and they were utterly and completely right. And it's really hard to take that as a new writer. Cause you're just like, damn it, but this is what I wanted. But then when you, when you sit back and you look at that feedback and you say, oh no, yeah, it's totally romance and it's romance and fantasy. And that's the genre. It's not romance and horror and fantasy. It's not, it doesn't have all these other things to it. It is is literally these two things. Let's lean. Let's lean into those. And then your readers are happy because your readers are expecting something. And yes, you should give them something new and exciting and fantastic. And that's totally going to be okay. And you can still, it's not a sacrifice so much as it is you're leaning into a specific genre. You know, you don't need to have all of these. Yes, you might touch on all of these, but you need to lean into one specific one and you need to follow the genre expectations of that one genre that you have fallen into. So I want to say a hard truth. Yes. You said in, when you prefaced this and you started going in and you're like, it's a new writer thing to be like, but this is my baby and it's seven genres and that's how the story works. Um, or it's three genres or it's. You know, whatever. Right. Okay, so when she said new writer, I kind of want to give a hard truth on that. A new writer doesn't mean someone who's just started writing. Oh, no. Gosh, no. A new writer means someone who has only been working on one story. I don't care how long you've been working on it. Yeah. Could if be 15 years. It'd be three. Maybe you've had <laughs> concepts for other stories and you've only finished that one story or maybe you haven't finished it or maybe you're working on the whole series of it or whatever it is. But all you know is that one series and you haven't ever, like, it's just ever evolving. You're a new writer. Because yeah. the whole process of writing is starting something and finishing it and then moving on to a new project and starting something and finishing it. Until you can do that multiple times, you're still a new writer. And edit and query. So I'm and, sorry that yeah. sucks. Like I, yes. I know that's hard to hear. And being a new writer is not a bad thing. It's no. not a bad thing to be at any level of writing. You're a writer, and that's like for me, that's an honorary badge. I say you win no matter what. Completely, absolutely. But there is a process in completing projects and going on to other projects and doing multiple projects and understanding what makes a project su successful when you've only have that one project and it means everything to you. And there's just that you're less likely to be open to how the world perceives it, or if it's marketable yeah. or who's reading it, because it's just, it's become something else. And I have this project. I have the same project. I understand you. I see you. I have the same yeah. project that I worked on for over 10 years that I rewrote three times that I, it's my baby and it's on the shelf. 
because I don't know if my baby will ever be what it needs to be because of what I was trying to do and I was as a new writer. And it's so hard when you have these concepts as a new writer to advance them and level them up. Sometimes it takes starting a new project to be able to use your leveled up skills. And so I've started multiple projects after that. I've started and completed multiple projects after that. Mm -hmm. And there's a level of understanding and there's a level of being able to step back and see that you're telling a story, what makes a good story versus this story is everything and it has to be perfect. Right. And so that's a thing. So if you're still in this phase where you're like, this story is everything and it has to be perfect, you're still a new writer and that's okay. And maybe you're not ready for these conversations and that's okay too. As long as you, if you yeah. keep writing, just keep writing. Just keep writing. And if you get offended by people who are critiquing your work and wondering what genre it is, or if you are seeking out, and here's the biggest part about genre expectations. If you're seeking out readers of a genre, if you have somebody that specifically, and I'm going to bring this up because it's a literally blatantly obvious. If you are pitching your romance novel to a romance reader and your couple dies in the end, your genre expectation. <laughs> of course you bring that up. Of, has to, I had to bring it up. I just have to. Um, <laughs> you are not a romance novel. I'm sorry. You're not. You know it's literally I the think you only could be. I believe in you. I believe you're in not. You. <laughs> you're not. You are, you are a women's fiction or a straight up fiction. You're not a romance no because a romance way. ends on a happy ever after. No way. And, and he's going to die after. and she's going to be pregnant with this kid and their love story is going to live on. And the second book's going to be when the kid's older and her love story. Nope. It's going to be great. No. It's going to be beautiful. And hey, if you want to write that, there <laughs> is. I'm not joking. There is a place for this romance for you. <sighs> it is not in the capital R band genre. It's not. So, to be fair, I actually don't really know where I stand on this. I just love how much it bothers Poppy. It is just literally like if you want to <laughs> literally create a war zone, bring up like, I don't feel like making an HEA for a romance. Just bring it up and you just watch the world explode around but you. But be able to laugh at, laugh at explosions. Otherwise, it's not worth it. It's true. That's because I can true. sit here and cackle and have fun. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. I was like, upset yes. and actually had a stake in the argument, this would be entirely yeah. different. And I will tell you, you are totally welcome to publish this book and you will be banished from every romance reader ever after that. They will they will literally put you on a blacklist if you kill off your romance novel characters. You will be blacklisted. They will never read another thing that comes from your pen name I ever mean, let's again. be fair. Of the two of us, you're the romance writer. So if there's a romance writer listening... Uh, you should definitely listen to Bobby you know, Yeah, like, like a yes. <laughs> if you want to explode your career from when you're very beginning, just you know, just just kill off your characters at the end of your romance novel. I don't even care if it's the epilogue and they lived a happy life and then they died. No, no, no. Like you're done. You're done. Like blacklisted. So, and this is literally coming so, from. But and that means, reader, that means this is your the notebook is not a romance. The romance, no, the notebook is not a romance. It's a fiction with romantic elements. Oh my god, it it's is my not favorite a romance. romance of all time. It's not a romance. It absolutely is. I love you. It's no, it's not. No, it is, <laughs> and it's perfect. You can keep saying that. It's very romantic. It is not a romantic <laughs> novel. It's not a romance. We've gotten sidetracked. Okay, we have. Nonetheless, but this is what we're talking about because you are going to have readers who are going to just annihilate you in reviews. And if you are okay with that, then you know what? Go ahead and do your thing. Just just do it. But the reader's expectations are there for a reason. The readers are who creates your genre. I mean, because like readers, they have these like, okay, this is my happy spot. I really like a YA novel because it does this thing. If your YA novel doesn't th- do this thing, then you've lost your genre expectation. Okay, I have super high cheater code levels here to level up beyond that. I would love to hear these. Okay, so sure, we can start with like the romance or creature horrors or young adult or whatever. But let, let, let's like like level this shit up. So mm-hmm. it's not just main genres. If you really want to understand oh, your no. reader expectations, every genre has subgenres. Oh, the subgenre land. There's so many. If you understand your subgenre, then you're going to make gold. Yes. But you have to understand it. And there's so many authors. I can't care how many authors that I've heard talk about 
hating genre expectations because they feel like their book is several genres and they want to mash up real genres together. Here's the thing. Go check subs. You absolutely yep. can mash genres together. No one, is tell- no one is telling you you can't do anything. You can do whatever you want to do, guys. Here's the thing, though. So Poppy's talking about happily ever afters and how much it matters to a romance reader. I have a creature horror and oh my goodness, I have a romance in it. I want to match these two categories. Guys, this exists. It totally does. Here's the catch. The creature horror writer in their head and the romance writer in their head understands the tropes of each. So like the monster has to be gross People have to die. It has to be dark. There probably has to be a happily ever after. Exactly. Right? Truth. And there has to be, like, the primary goal of the story is this couple getting together despite this creature monster that's gross. Yeah. So if you're mashing genres, no one's telling you you can't do that. You have to be aware of what the expectations are of each and make sure you're satisfying both. You can't just say this story is this because it has these two elements. You have to say this story satisfies both of these reader-based expectations. That's the leveled up perspective we're talking about here. I completely agree with you. Yeah. And you should lean into certain things too. I mean, there are certain things that you're going to have to let go of. If you want this per- specific thing, you absolutely have to have it. Your your entire book would fall apart without this one element. What does that one element fit into genre-wise? You know, go with that. And then everything else needs to lean into that one specific thing that you absolutely cannot let go of. I would actually step back for a second. And I would say... What time period are you in? What's your setting in? That, yeah. What age yep. is your main character? Gosh, there's so many elements to it. Well, I feel like those are the first basic things Puzzle. to narrow down. True. Right? Yeah. And that knocks out so much. It does. Um, The pacing. Like, is there lots of fights and action going on? Or is it really introspective debating and thinking about things a lot and analyzing them? Like, yeah. look back. Back it to like is if it was possible to take a step back and look at what you have versus what you think you have, and this is why your beta readers are really great too, especially if it's beta readers who don't know you, especially if mm-hmm. you're a newer writer and you're figuring this out. Go find, I mean, every writer site has beta swaps. Our Discord group has a beta thread if you're looking for beta readers. Yep, um, you can find our Discord group on our web page, so make sure you check yep. that out. But your beta readers, if you get a variety of them, and typically when you get have a beta reader, you have a list of questions. Like, I don't know, anywhere from 5 to 15, depending on mm-hmm. the beta group. And you can ask, what genre would you put this in? Yes, that would be great. What tropes do you think this satisfies? Yeah. Like, you can ask these type of questions to your beta readers. Because typically they're readers. You want to make sure your group isn't just all romance writers and you're pitching your creature horror romance and they're like oh my god there's something creepy and crawly with tentacles going in places and i don't know what's happening like yes make sure your beta readers are aware of what they're getting into and they're familiar with your genre and they're comfortable with it or they're familiar not if you're just figuring out your genre they're familiar with the elements of your story Sorry, Charlie just sneezed. (laughs) That's allowed. (laughs) Okay, I'm good. Trigger warnings. There we go. Make sure you have all of your trigger warnings established for your beta readers. And they can come in and help direct you. Like, this is really the type of reader I think that would like this. Yeah. And if you direct them with the questions, they'll answer. I will say I have learned so much in the past after I published my last book. So in the last, like, three months of handing it over to bloggers, bloggers and readers, people who read, like read for serious, not like I'm just going to read a book a year. I'm talking like they're reading like 60 to like 90 books a year. They're just eating some books. 
Um, they know tropes and bloggers talk in tropes. And so if you haven't listened to our trope episode, I would highly, highly recommend it. Tropes are not scary, guys. Like it's not something They're to like shy codes. away from. They're seriously cheat codes. They are cheat codes. They are like, this is what you lean into when you do genres. So genres and tropes literally are just holding hands all day long and being best buds. Oh, yeah. Um, They're skipping so, through the... Oh, God, they like are. the field the totally, of flowers like, yes. and crazy snakes below. They're just skipping along. Yes. And so your bloggers, you know, when if you're trying to publish your book and you publish your book... And you get bloggers a hold of your book. Um, they're gonna. One of the first things they're gonna say is like, "Oh, this is this trope, all right, in this genre." And that's what they're looking at. They're looking at tropes. They're looking at genres. Looking at the tropes that fall within the genres, and that is their reader expectation. So if you do not follow those, and you hand it over to a blogger that is not accustomed to reading what you have handed them. It's not going to go well for you. And you know what? If that's what you want to do, then cool. And that's same with a reader. Hold up. Let's add one more element to that. Okay. Point of view. Oh, yeah. I get dinged on that a little bit. Yes. Point of yes. view is relevant as well. There are expectations um, within a genre, within bloggers, within reviewers. Reviewers, readers tend to like certain types of point of views. I do. There are certain, like, if you're pitching out a fantasy novel, third person past tense is going to be your typical. If you have a first person present, you're going to have to sell that a little bit. And your person's going to have to know you need to pitch that to them. And it's not that you can't do it. We're not saying no, no, there's nothing totally you can't do, but you have yeah. to understand, you have to really like find that niche group that wants that and dig into it and expect that it's okay to go against the grain, but if you're going to go against the grain, expect a little extra effort and work to make it work. I think that's definitely been like what I've learned in the past years of publishing and figuring out what people read and the ones that I expected to do well with, like the readers. And they were like, mm, this didn't hit for me for this reason. I'm like, I didn't know my own book. I just think that understanding what you've actually written is going to be the key into figuring out who to pitch it to. And that's why genre expectations are there. That's why it's important. Yes, you can write whatever you want to, but like there's going to be certain elements that your genre is going to expect that your readers are going to need in order to be fulfilled from your book. And if you don't want to follow those, okay, but good luck to you. Like that's going to be hard. It's going to be a tough. These aren't like road. restrictions to like make you color inside of the lines, guys. Yeah. We want you to color outside of the lines. These are cheat codes. What colors are grabbing people outside of the lines? Yeah. Like these are ways to understand who your readers are and how to grab them. It's great if you're like a well-rounded reader and you love so many different aspects of so many stories and you want your story to encompass all of those. The problem is, is finding other well-rounded readers that are exactly well-rounded in the way that you are is like yes. a needle in a haystack. Yeah. You really, and if you want the story, like if you want to tell a good story, I don't know about you. Like I'm not super interested in making money on my stories. I am super interested in telling a good story. And that means people have to want to read it. Reviews have to yeah. come in saying they like it. So more people want to review it and yes. read it. I want people to come into my world and care about my characters. So I have to make sure it's crafted for the right people. Yep. And so you need to find your readers. You need to find your comps. I think that's a super important key that I have been scared of. Because, you I think know, that's normal. I've seen, especially recently on like um, writer forums, I've seen a lot more talk about comps and how people just don't have time to read recent books and you have to have recent books for comps and like, you need to. Oh, guys, make time. Make time, make time, make that, make that part of your, make that part of your program for the year. You need to make sure that you're reading, um, you're reading books from, literally the year that you're that you're in you know what's coming out and you are listening to bloggers and you're listening to 
uh, you know, publishers and what's coming out and seeing what's going on. You know, and that's an interesting fact too. When you say listening to these two people in the industry, I would highly recommend. So if you're looking for bloggers, um, Instagram. Yeah. Follow gosh, yes. whatever genres you love. Follow all of the bloggers in those genres. Um, and you'll start seeing and, what they're putting out, what they're talking about, and all the stuff that Poppy's talking about, you're going to start seeing firsthand. It's not okay, private so, information. It's not. And I, the way to find that stuff, I know that's kind of like, oh, just go find it. But like hashtag romance blogger, book blogger, hashtag horror book blogger, like go and play with your hashtags and try to find these people because you will. And do your genre blogger, book blogger is a big one. Um, Insta, uh, what's it called? Booksta, that's a good one. Instagram books, reading, like there's just so, just go explore. You might take a literal day just exploring hashtags. And I'm going to say the same thing for hashtags with Twitter. I would say with Twitter, Mm -hmm. you're looking for agents and you're looking for publishers. Instagram, you're looking for bloggers. Both of them, all three of them, publishers, agents, book bloggers, they all have absolutely invaluable information into the industry. You should be following them on your social media. I don't care if they've rejected you. I don't care if you don't like the book that they're blogging. I I don't care what. Just to understand how they pitch things, what things go, why, what they're looking for. Your social media feeds should be filled with this information so you know what's going on in the industry. So you'll see the same book popping up over and over and over again. It's because they've hit their genre expectations. So you'll see bloggers talking about it. It's because they've hit the tropes that they were really itching for. And they've done it. They've spun it in a way that works for that genre expectation. They have fulfilled their genre expectation. They fulfilled their tropes and they've done it in a new and exciting way. I know that sounds like so easy, right? Just do that. No big deal. Um, But you know, when you're writing a book, it is so easy to be defensive about it. And it's so easy to stop and be like, no, but this is what I wrote. That's great. You know, but you are going to have to edit and alter at some point and to lean into a very specific genre that you're in in order for it to be read and appreciated by the readers. Subgenre. Subgenres. Yes. Yeah. Let's absolutely. go layer deeper, guys. Like it's a sub- subgenre you're looking for. You're not just horror. You're not just romance. You're not just mystery. No. You're not just, you need to find you're out. You're not just fiction. <laughs> you're, I mean, it goes in so many different ways. It is amazing this hierarchy of of writing uh, that you can find, and you can you can literally just keep going down to sub genres and like sub sub genres, and it's just there's so many different ways that you can find your book, but make sure that it falls into something if you want it to be appreciated and read and what it's at. And on that token, that's how you find your comps as well. Yeah, it's not looking through all romance books. It's understanding your tropes and understanding your subgenres, and then once you narrow it down and get more and more narrowed down, all of a sudden you're like, okay, what books are already existing in this category? Yeah, who's the author for this very specific subgenre category? Who's number one listed on Amazon? Who is number one listed in, on most popular lists and Goodreads? Like huge. Yes, check them out. What's their deal? Are they self-published? Are they published traditionally? Are they hybrid published? It doesn't really matter, but as long as they fall within their genre, that's what you're looking for. And it's, you know, there are people who are massively successful through all because they hit their genre expectation and their readers are happy because they knew exactly what they were walking into and they did it in a new and exciting way. That's the key. It's not that you have to deliver the same story that's always been told. And I think that's what people assume they get defensive about it because of it yeah when absolutely. they hear genre expectations or reader expectations you're like not yes, this is following the thing. A it's format good. that is the story has to end this way i mean obviously if it's a romance clearly you need to have an aga right. you can do that a thousand million different ways <laughs> just do it but here's the thing like you can take these <laughs> st- <laughs> i set you up for it. it's my fault you did i know um but you can take these tropes, you can take these niche little categories and you can twist them and do them in different ways. I promise you, you can. Um, you can take the damsel in stress and 
then they can love and want the damsel in distress and you can make your damsel in distress be the big strong male and the we haven't done that have sweet we? Little, oh, wait, we did. the sweet little sugar fairy saves the big hulking damsel in distress I mean, Man. you can play with True. these tropes and you can deliver them in different packaging. You can do different twists on them. You can, I'm telling you guys, it's endless. It's endless what you can do. And I know everyone says like, there's no story that hasn't been told. And I get that. Like, that's why there's reader expectations. That's why there's tropes. That's why there's subgenres. Sure. It's a certain type of story. It's still your story. You yeah. still get to there's so much wiggle room, I promise you. No one is, like, putting you in the corner and telling you you can't dance. Your name is not Baby. I promise. Yes. There's voice. There's characters. There's turning tropes upside down, flipping them around. There's not to mention the fact that our world changes constantly. And so it's like... We need to update a lot of those tropes that have happened and stuff you know, moves along and it's like, ooh, that didn't age so well. So update it and make it something new and exciting. And it's just, there's so many different ways that you can spin something and still have it fall within a genre expectation so that your readers are happy. And so that, you know, it's not, it's not a slight and it's, and it's really, I don't know, I get frustrated with people who are like, well, this is what it is. And it's like, okay, well, you're still in the wrong genre. You can say that this is what my book is. And that is awesome. And I think it's great that you're standing by specifically what this book is. But there are certain things that you're going to need to lean into if you want it to sell and be popular. And you cannot jump into a genre that doesn't have those expectations and say, you know what, I'm just going to sh change the genre. You are not Neil Gaiman, okay? You do not have that <laughs> capability. Just be like, you know what? I'm going to make my own genre. Oh, that's a no, hard truth. But sorry, it's, right, it's a hard truth. Oh. It's like you do not have that capability yet. When you become Neil Gaiman, then you are totally welcome to make your own genre. And you honestly, do he yet. doesn't make his own genres. He, he twists he and folds and plays beautifully within the system already established. Ooh, within the genres right? so he can pitch to his exact readers. He's using all the cheater codes. Because he understands yes. them. Because he gets them. He understands it. So you need to go and study your genres and what's there and what your reader expectations and your tropes are. Super important. I And it's not something that holds you back. It's something, it's a tool that gets you Pushing further. Forward. Yes. So 100%. I love so much too when you were like, let's update some of these tropes that are aging so well. Gosh. There's so many of those. Well. I would love I'm to see sure. that so, so much. So, so much. You know, I love seeing that snapshot into history, but at the same time, there are certain things that just do not age well. And it's like, hmm, that was uncomfortable. Make it not uncomfortable. Make it push ahead into the era that we're in. And that is really amazing. I mean, that's why classics keep getting rebuilt and it's not a bad thing it's a beautiful thing and it's well just, i mean it was so spider-man and it's like it's 20th something movie and it's the same thing over and over and over again <laughs> we're not talking about movies <laughs> we're talking about classic books sorry we are we're talking about classic books and we're talking about classic stories and we're talking about things like that you know you can still take those and and remake them and respend them and make them pretty again and updated again and make them you know, perfect for the times that we're in. And that's going to make readers happy as well. So, cause you're going to push it to somebody who really needs it. And it's just, I don't know. I really enjoy that part. And it took me a really long time to figure out, okay, like I really need to be serious with myself here and say, yes, I have a seven genre book, but you know what? I should, I know it's in this one genre. Like I know it is subconsciously. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know, but it's actually paranormal romance. I know it has a whole bunch of other elements to it. They all do. And that's really great and fun, but finding those and falling within the genre expectation is what's going to make your readership really come out and see you and appreciate you. So, and if you don't want to do that, that's fine, but you're going to get blacklisted and you, your readers are going to be pissed. They're going to read your stuff. Or even worse, you're going to be completely ignored. Oh God, you're going to be completely ignored. I mean, you're going to get those first few reviews and people are going to be like, that is not what I expected. That is not what I expected and I'm not okay with it. And there's you're no going to traumatize the readers and that's that. You're done. So don't traumatize your readers. 
I don't. It's not funny. Well, it's not like a game of you like, oh, ha, ha, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix it up. No, you're just gonna piss people off. That's all you're doing. And the thing so, is, but you know, the, the emotions that you want to strike and the things that you want to do, there are readers who like that. You don't have to yes. have everything happily ever after. You don't have to have everything happy. If you're Let's like, know. oh, I hate that. I'm so sick of that. I want to rebel against that. There is a there's a genre for it. Absolutely. There are, yep. And there's readers for it. A genre means yeah. that there are reader expectations. There are readers who love that. And the genre system is set up to help you funnel into them. Yeah. Don't, but don't get lazy and not review all the genres. Don't, you know, don't just be like, well, you know what? It's this. But you don't actually know it's this. And Go don't and get lazy and say you don't have time to read books within the genre you're writing. Please don't do that because I, I don't even have nice things to say right now. <laughs> That's that. Yeah. That's just the cat's mama you know, shame on your look. That, womp womp. Yeah. That's just lame. Don't be lame. Yeah, go. I, I know, I know it's hard to carve out time, but you need to and you need to do it with books that are within the past year or two. Not 10, not 20. Not the classics. Cuts. I will throw in a couple classics every year. Just classics year. that I haven't read and that understand like if there's like we with our writing group, we did the Great Gatsby. Because oh, I had never question. read it, and every single article I read, if you're looking at theme for introduction and ending, you have to read The Great Gatsby. Everyone listed yeah. it. And so yep. I'm like, I need to understand what this did so right. So it's yeah. not that you don't read the classics. Absolutely do. But you have to be so well-versed in the books coming out now. Yeah. Your genre. And if you're picking between multiple genres, well, that's your fault for giving yourself multiple homework. I have to, you know, deal with it. Yep. Yeah. And you can have elements of things, but you need to have one specific genre. It's okay to have elements of all kinds of different stuff. I have mythology. I have a horror. I one have all kinds of different stuff. One specific subgenre, please. One specific subgenre. Not the genre. Jump into subgenre. That and lean into it. Yes, lean into your subgenre. I think like you'll art. actually find it's more freeing when you look at subgenres. I, I think it's agree really constricting when you only look at genres and you're like, but it has all of these different elements. So do a Google search on different subgenres. Like I recently was trying to figure out my book and I'm like, well, it's fantasy, it's paranormal, it's horror, what's going on? I had a beta oh. reader who was like, it's neo noir. Like, what? I had never heard that one before. Like, wait what huh? Huh? uh that's and so i looked it up i'm like that's mystery she's like yeah it's mystery that has paranormal aspects that's in a modern time like all the things all the different genre blending i was doing was exactly what this sub genre did i love it and so and there was like perfect comps already as soon as you pulled up that sub genre all of these really famous comps came up and i was like oh yeah my book is like that I'm telling you guys, subgenres are where it's at. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And it's okay for your book to be similar. I know it, it's almost hurtful when you're starting out because you're like, my book is like nothing else. No, but you kind of want it to, you want it to, you want it to be on the same shelf. What shelf does it go on? If a reader loves exactly. this, they're going to love this. Exactly. You don't want it in a dark corner in the back because it doesn't fit anywhere. You want it on a front table with 17 other books that are freaking phenomenal because that's where it belongs. Right. And that goes back to, this is, I'm really pulling on strings here. That goes back to the very first episode we talked about writer friends. Like you're not in competition yeah. with all of these other writers. There's going to no. be other writers who are writing amazing things in your subgenre, and you're not trying to outwrite them. You're not trying to compete with them. You're trying to be like, oh, wow, your readers are going to love my book too. Yeah. We would have a great relationship in cross marketing and fan base. And like, it readers don't just read one book and then they're done. God, they read so many. You're not in, like, that, you're not in competition. Yeah. If your friend gets published or if your friend goes somewhere, it doesn't mean you're not because that's it. That was the only option. There was only one slot opening. There's only one job opening. The publishing yeah. industry is glorious. And then there's infinite openings. Infinite, yeah. guys. And somebody who loves your book is going to go and read another book. And somebody who reads your comparison books is going to go and read your book. You want comps. Like that's super duper important. It's really funny. I know you mentioned POV and 
I will say, okay, so just using myself as an example here, um, I have a romance novel, obviously, and subgenre. I mean, I have certain tropes and I have this stuff and I had pitched it to some reviewers and some bloggers and it wasn't as well received as I thought it would be because it wasn't in the same POV. Like I have a single POV, um, whereas a lot of romances are dual POV. And I did not even think about that being an issue. I just didn't. It just didn't even occur to me that that would be a thing. But I'm like, oh crap, the comparison books that I had were dual POV and mine is a single POV. And that is like its own genre practically. So like I have a romance with a single POV and it's like, oh, oops. Oh, so now I have to go look up comparison writing with a single POV instead of a dual POV. And that's like a thing. So it's like, go and know what the heck you're writing. Cause like I didn't at the time, it just didn't even occur to me. And I, that, that's a learning experience thing. It's just, it's going through the motions and being like, Oh, whoops. And now it's I a just, learning experience that you don't yeah. have to go through because you've learned through yeah. Poppy. Present. Yeah. So like go and make sure that your POV is the same. If you have a second person POV, of a single POV, go look up second person POVs. Like that is rare. And it's like, you're going to find sort of that subgenre and stuff of like who you're in. You can really nail down exactly who your comps are by figuring out number one, your subgenre, and then your POV and then your tropes. Go check it out. I mean, it's like, you know what the heck you're writing and know what you've written and know what you're trying to pitch so that you know exactly what category it goes into. It's really important. I agree. And it's worth your time, guys. Regardless Gosh, of is. what your goal is for writing. I mean, ultimately, whatever your goal is, you want people to read your story. Yeah. Right? So we can all be on the same Enjoy level it. with that. So the more people who read your story, whether it's to help them, to make them feel not alone, to make money, to express some great theme that matters to you, whatever it is, you want people to read your story, this is the gateway to do that. I agree. It, satisfy, it satisfies all end goals. Yeah. No one reading the story means no end goals are satisfied. Right. So I don't care what your goal is or what your motivation is. for. I, I do care, actually. I care that it matters to you. And I, I get that everyone has their own path. And I believe in that. But yes. you're telling a story and you're publishing it because you want people to read it. Yeah. So reader expectations matter and you just need to embrace it. Yeah. 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 Know what you're writing. You got <laughs> figure it out. Really it's going to be hard sometimes. We get it. It is for us too. Yeah. Gosh, is it ever? And you don't even realize some of the things and then you get smacked with it. And you're like, Oh, oops. Yeah. I didn't do that. Lots of oopses <laughs> in this process, guys. We you are with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So obviously in the meantime, keep punching those keys. Yes. We will be back and you're going to have more words and we're going to talk about more things. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And if you liked this episode, please subscribe and give us that clickable five-star love. Got writer questions or feedback? Reach out through our website. And until next time, make sure to punch the keys.